Welcome to the second module of your Zemnu Cell 1 training course. This lesson is designed to introduce you to everything there is to know about generating and applying highly accurate GNSS positional corrections into your L1 dataset. Zemnu Cell 1 has been designed around the application of surveying. Therefore, applying a form of positional corrections to your data is fundamentally essential. Without the application of such corrections, your data will not process in DGI Terra. Throughout this module, we will introduce you to the fundamentals of GNSS RTK and explain how your corrections can be derived and applied in real time, either by establishing a connection with the DRTK2 mobile base station or from using an internet service to source your corrections. As an alternative method, we will then also demonstrate how to post-process GNSS corrections using a post-processing workflow if you don't have access to the internet or a DRTK2 when out in the field. Firstly, let's look at a workflow for obtaining positional corrections using an RTK network connection through connection to the internet using NTRIP protocol. NTRIP stands for Network Transport of RTCM via Internet Protocol and enables the GNSS rover, or in our case, the Matrice 300, to access data from an RTK base station over the internet. When used for photogrammetry purposes, this data is used to improve the positional accuracy of the georeferenced EXIF data. However, with the Zemu Cell 1's LiDAR scanner, this data is stored for application during the DGI terror processing phase. An RTK network can sometimes be referred to as a cause network, which stands for a continuously operating reference station. Multiple RTK base stations are used to create the virtual reference station close to the drone, which has the added benefit of shortening the GNSS baseline to boost the accuracy of the results. We will now demonstrate how to establish an RTK network connection. On screen now, you will see that we have navigated over to the Enterprise Smart Controller for the Matrice 300 RTK. The first thing we will need to do is establish an internet connection between the controller using one of two ways. The first is to use a mobile hotspot, which requires us to access our device settings by our finger swipe from the top of the screen into the center. On the menu, we will then select the small settings cog at the top of the screen and then navigate to Wi-Fi settings. If you have already connected to the device before, then you can simply select the correct device and the controller will connect. If you haven't connected the device before, you can then select your device once it becomes visible and input the password using the keyboard you should then have an established internet connection. The second and recommended method of connecting to the internet is by using a 4G dongle. This is the best method of establishing an internet connection as it will provide an uninterrupted signal as opposed to a mobile hotspot that is likely serving other functionality. The first step is to place a data SIM card with data allowance into the dongle and close the clasp ready for insertion into the RC. Taking the smart controller, remove the casing surrounding the internal battery located at the bottom of the device. Inside, you will find a USB port to place your dongle. Once the dongle is in place, restore the casing around the dongle. Assuming the SIM card inserted has data, then an internet connection should be established. Now that we are connected to the internet, we are now ready to connect to an RTK network. To do this, we need to navigate to our main operating interface on the smart controller. Using the ellipsis button in the top right hand corner of your screen, you can access the aircraft settings, which is where you will find the RTK settings. Select this. In order to connect to RTK, you must first select RTK positioning as on. It is also recommended to select the maintain positional accuracy mode for enhanced flight positioning if RTK is lost during a mission. When selecting the RTK service type, this is where you would select Custom Network RTK, which will then provide you with the input fields for the following credentials. Host, which will be the IP address or web address, port number, username, password, and mount point. These credentials will be provided by your RTK network supplier on the point of purchase. There may be different configurations that can be used. For example, mount points can vary depending on location and the type of service required. Therefore, if unsure, it is recommended to speak to your supplier directly. Once all credentials have been input, you can connect to an RTK network. At first, this will show you that the RTK data is converging. However, after a short period of time, this should complete and show green that the connection is successful. The RTK network must be fixed as this ensures that there are no ambiguity errors imposed onto the measurements. Failure to account for these ambiguities can translate into pure positional error on the final point cloud. 
At this stage, it is important to check the standard deviation of your aircraft's position once the RTK network corrections have been applied. This can be found at the bottom of the screen. If standard deviations fall below 5cm, then you are now ready to fly with an RTK network connection. The second form of RTK connectivity is to use the DRTK2 base station with direct connection to the Matrice 300 RTK during flight. Using the DRTK2 base station is especially useful if you're working in remote areas that have weak phone signals preventing the use of RTK network connections. The DRTK2 supports the use of all four GNSS satellite constellations, including GPS, GLONASS, Galileo and Beidou, and storing the GNSS data in the standardised Rhinex format required for both general use and with use with the Zemu Cell 1. Unlike an RTK network, the DRTK2 requires a physical setup on site in order to receive positional data that is accurate to a coordinate reference system. The diagram on screen shows a similar setup to that of the Matrice 300 and the DRTK2, where the DRTK2 is positioned over a known point and left to record satellite data whilst the drone is in flight. In real time, the DRTK2's observations are then transmitted via radio link to Matrice 300 for application to the Zemu Cell 1 photogrammetric and LiDAR data. We will now take you through the setup of the DRTK2 mobile base station. You must first find a location that is in a clear outdoor environment without any natural or unnatural obstructions such as trees or buildings. It is best practice to set your DRTK2 up in a location where the horizon is visible in all directions. The DRTK2 on its own will not provide you with data that is accurate to a coordinate reference system. Therefore, it is strongly recommended that the system is set up over a known point with a known WGS84 coordinate. Alternatively, but not recommended, you can leave the DRTK2 to record observations for a period of time prior to takeoff. This will allow the system to determine its own position more accurately. However, this has an ambiguous nature as the length of time the base station needs to be left to record cannot be determined. Therefore, setting up over a known point is strongly advised. Once a known coordinate has been established, it is now time to set the DRTK2 up over that known point. Firstly, loosen the extendable legs so that the tripod is up to about chest height, and then place the tripod into the ground so it looks roughly level. Stamp down the ends of the tripod legs so that it is firmly mounted into the soft ground. Next, adjust the tripod according to the level and bubble. Gently loosen each end of the tripod legs to move the bubble into the centre. Throughout this initial process, you may need to make small adjustments to the centre of the tripod's position to ensure it is visible over the known point you have just measured. This can then be a process of trial and error. Once you are happy the tripod is over the level, we can then begin to assemble the DRTK2. Place a WB37 battery into the front compartment of the base station. This battery is used to power the base station throughout satellite observations and has an average capacity of about 3 hours. Using the screw mechanism, attach the antenna to the extension rod. If slightly misaligned or not level when the DRTK2 is in place, then make small adjustments to rectify this to ensure it is centered in the inner black circle. The DRTK2 is used throughout the DJI fleet, therefore you will need to ensure it is in the correct operating mode for the Matrice 300 RTK. Firstly, press and hold the power button to turn on the DRTK2 mobile base station. After a minute or two, the power status indicator should indicate a solid green light which would indicate that the base station is receiving corrections from 10 or more satellites. For use as a base station for the Matrice 300 RTK, the DRTK2 will need to be in mode 5, allowing for the GNSS corrections to be broadcasted from the base station to the drone in real time. Press and hold the operating mode until it flashes green 5 times. During your first setup, you will need to connect the DRTK2 to the aircraft. To do this, press and hold the left button until it starts to flash orange. At this point, head over to the smart controller and into your RTK settings where you will select your RTK service type to be the DRTK2. Under this tab, select link device and wait for the two systems to connect. Once connected, it is important to input your known value into the RTK advanced settings, which is located at the bottom of the RTK settings window. Advanced settings can be locked by a unique code. However, as standard, they should be stored as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You can change this via your online account or through the DJI application. 
Once you are inside of your advanced settings, simply input the known coordinates latitude and longitude as well as the height. At this stage it is important to note that you will need to add the DRTK2 height onto your known coordinate height as the DRTK2 measures from the antenna. As standard the DRTK2 measures to 1.8 meters, however it is always best to measure using a measuring tape. Now that we've established a connection between the systems and set the DRTK2 up over a known point, we would now be ready to fly. So far throughout this module, we've looked at how real-time kinematics can be used to attribute corrections to your positional data in real time. Whilst RTK provides an efficient workflow, it may not always be available due to the reliance on internet connectivity, or you do not have the ability to set up the DRTK2 over a known point. In this instance, you can instead use Rhinex data in a form of post-processing workflow. This method is one that is common amongst surveyors or teams that already have access to GNSS receivers, which can be set up to record observations as a base station. Alternatively, this workflow can also utilize third-party corrections available over the internet. If you are an owner of a DRTK2, you can also use this system to record Rhinex observations for post-processing purposes. We'll now move on to a demonstration of attributing third-party positional corrections. During a post-processing workflow, the aircraft can be left to record data without connection to an RTK correctional service or base station. Therefore, it is important to switch RTK connection off in RTK settings. Your first of three sources of GNSS corrections for post-processing will be through the DRTK2 mobile base station. For this process, it is recommended that the GNSS baseline or the distance between the drone and receiver is kept below 10 kilometers. Also, ensure that the DRTK2 is set up in an area with clear sky coverage and no obstructions to prevent the impact of multipath error in the end result. It is also recommended to leave your base station to record for 120 minutes, with your aerial mission running in tandem so that your timestamp LiDAR data coincides with the timestamped observation data. The DRTK2 can be left to record data on its own, and once all the data is being collected, use a Type-C USB cable to connect the DRTK2 to a PC and copy the base station file into the L1's result file. The data output provided by the DRTK2 will natively be in a format that is directly compatible with the L1 and will be named so that DJI Terra will recognize the file as a positional corrections file. The base station file that you are looking for needs to have a corresponding timestamp in the form of a .dat file. A detailed overview of DJI Terra processing will be explained in a later section. However, when you process this data in DJI Terra, the software should automatically recognize the base station file and calculate accurate POS data. If you do not have a DRTK2 base station, but do have a third-party GNSS receiver, then you can use this to collect your satellite observation data. Again, without any connection to the drone, the base station must be placed in a position with strong horizon coverage, whilst also within a 10 km vicinity of your aerial data capture. Likewise, the base station's recordings will need to span for at least the duration of the aerial data capture to coincide with the L1's timestamp data. The resultant observation file recorded by your third-party base station will then be used during the DJI Terra Pro processing phase. The file will need to be renamed in the process. We will now demonstrate and provide information on how to rename your third-party observation data for use with DJI Terra and L1 data. This base station file will need to be loaded into the same directory as the LiDAR files. And if there is an RTB file in the same directory, this will need to be deleted to allow for processing. Whilst we have mainly referred to observation data in RhinoMex format, the ZEMUCEL1 supports the following base station protocols. RTCM, OEM, UBX and RhinoMex. Using the desired format, rename your observation file the same as the RTK file already contained within your L1 data followed by .obs if using Rhinex data, or RTCM, OEM, or UBX if using any other formats. This concludes the section on applying positional corrections to your L1 data. One final note is that base station files are necessary for all L1 data processing. If neither NTRIP or PPK files exist, L1 data cannot be processed. If the RTK is disconnected during flight, the mission will be automatically paused to ensure data validity.